Hey, it's Coolio if you don't know, and it is time for a new long run series. Uh, so the hint that I gave people on what we're going to be playing is that it is a game that technically I have played on my old Let's Play the World YouTube, cha YouTube channel many, many years ago. I didn't actually get to finish it. And there's a couple of reasons why I didn't get that why I didn't get to finish it. I could have finished it, but it just ended up not happening. Um, and it's a game that speaks for itself. It did before, and it still does now. And let's hope that this game doesn't drag on too much. As I open up Studio A here. And hopefully this captures. Ah, uh, yes. What you doing? What you doing? The um, the game capture is definitely right. there. It is. So anyway, <laughs> we're playing Spyro the Dragon Reignited. Uh, as soon as it recognizes my controller, at the very least. Hmm. I may have to restart the game because I don't know why, but it's not capturing my controller. So just actually just stare at the tile screen for a second. Let's see if I can figure this out right quick. Uh, it's possible that if I do this... What the heck is this screen? This is not what I'm used to... Hello? It also refuses to focus. Alright, um... I have to stop the recording for a second. I'm not gonna start over from the beginning again, because at this point I've done the reveal. Give me a second. All right, the controller is working now. So yes, as I was saying, Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I have played part of Spyro 1 on my old channel, which was kind of as part of a challenge race type of thing with another Let's Player who ended up closing her channel at some point without really saying anything about it. So eh. I could have finished my run, but I didn't. But today, we are going to be playing from the beginning. As you can see, I've already cleared this at uh, 112%, I guess, the game decides to call this. I pressed the wrong button. And we're going to start from the beginning. And I forgot to turn off mods. It's been peaceful here in the Five Worlds, or is it six? <laughs> For a Dragon's Age, we now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Ganok character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That does it! Huh? Looks like I've got some things to do. <laughs> the adventure begins. 
Except that there's... I was testing out some mods and I forgot to turn them off. So give me a sec, we're gonna have to take this again. <laughs> anyway. Here we are. In the world of dragons. There's a Spyro. He's a cool dude. Um, let me see if I can get reacquainted with the controls here, because it has been a little bit. Alright. I think if I do that, yeah. Sparks points to the nearest gems. If I do that, that's the look mode. This, dodge rolls, which are now in all three games. Anyway, let's talk to this guy. Nestor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free ten dragons in the artisan world, then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. What prevents you from telling me anything else? That's one thing that I've... that I do not understand. Anyway, the, this, is, this is going... like, the intention here is that I'm going to, uh... full clear this game. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing that I'm getting all of the skill points, because some of them are really hard to get. But I will be getting every single gem, every single dragon, every single other... Who, who's a what's it? Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torch him! Keep your horns on, Spyro! You have much to learn first. Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? Uh... His name is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. So here's something that they only tell you about much later in the game, but you can do any time. Jump on all five of these. Doesn't matter which order. And you open that stage. We're not going to go there yet. In fact, I'm probably going to leave that one for, like, one of the last ones we do in this world. Yeah, Tyrion knows what's up. Okay, so I think... Oh, there you are. I knew there was a dude here somewhere. Uh, was there anything over here? Yeah, the flying stages are part of the reason why I'm I'm saying I'm not doing all of the um all of the skill points because holy crap. But here's another thing that Spyro can do. He can glide. Whee! Here's something that Spyro can't do in this game, is hover. For some reason that was a skill point. Alright. I didn't say I was going to get none of the skill points. I'm going to get some by means of playing the game. Argus! Cool flash! Do that again! The artisan's boss is through a portal in the dragon mouth. But you are not yet ready, Spyro. First, you must complete one of the other artisan lands. And when he says one of the other, he really actually means one of the other. And that and that is a mechanic that won't come back into play until the end of the game. Hey buddy, I saw you. I saw you. Come back here. Dang. Thomas, what are you doing? Hey Spyro, press the jump button twice to glide. And and don't be afraid. Afraid? 
Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. I do appreciate that, like, they have not changed any of the text. Like, it, it is all exactly as it was in the original game, with the exception of, like, he said, press the jump button twice to glide. Which, in, in the PlayStation version, uh, they would say, press the X button twice to glide. But it might not be the X button on the controller that you're uh, that you're using. So you can also press. Um, speaking of the X button, you can press the X button. Well, it's the X button if you're playing on a Switch Pro controller. Or it might be Y on an Xbox controller, or Triangle on a PlayStation controller. Anyway, that makes you drop down its So, if I'm not mistaken, there are only a hundred gems in this first area. Where is that last one? Over here. There we go. Anyway, so that's 100% clear. Stone Hill's right here. Let's do Stone Hill. The up face button, yes. Exactly, Terry. That's what I am trying to say very clumsily. Oh, by the way, you can uh, perform various maneuvers on the loading screen. Doing pretty good, Ricky. How are you? Oh. My charge is more powerful than yours. What are you gonna do about it? Nothing. That's what. Yep. Well, what do you know? There's something in this well. I don't know why, but Gavin's here. Watch the dragonfly, Spyro. His color indicates his power. When he eats butterflies, he stays strong, like me. Uh, sure. I don't think that's exactly how it works, but mm, general idea anyway. Also, I'd like to point out the fact that I am playing this on maximum settings, and recording, and streaming. Still buttery smooth. Couldn't do that on my old computer. After you've freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. But first... Let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya! It is a little weird though, hearing, um... Hear that? That's the sound of the son of a bitch. Hey, 
Yeah, I hear that a lot, especially in this game. But also a little bit in the other two. But yes, um, it's a little weird hearing the uh, lines from uh, this game being voiced by Tom Kenny, because uh, they were voiced by Carlos Elzraki in the original first game. But uh, I guess they, it, it, it was a better idea to you know, keep one voice actor for all three games um, if you're going to remake it, right? Hey, Gilvis. Spyro, my friend. How about a hint on gliding? You bet. For the longest glide, press the jump button at the top of your jump, and try pressing the action button to drop down mid-flight. Big old goofy look there at the end. Okay. I was afraid that I had uh, flubbed that jump a little bit, but uh, no, it's fine. I see something over here. And sure enough, there's some treasure, and there's this key. Don't worry, the only dragon that walks on all fours. There are some trapped dragons that uh, are on all fours, but most of them are by are gonna be bipedal. And most of them that are uh, quadrupeds uh, will just end up saying, "Thank you for releasing me." Seems like some underrepresentation going on. I don't know. Okay, let's see if we can get back up top now. And this is not the way to go. Now. Yeah, I hear ya. I hear ya. Coming after you, buddy. Better watch out. That smug face jerk over there. Son of a bitch! Mm. Come back here! Nope, that's not it. Ah. Uh. Get over here. Flame war is on. There you go. That's what you get. Stealing the dragon egg. A jerk. A jerk face jerk. Excuse me, goodness. I guess see me use Sparks' homing function a lot in this playthrough. <laughs> Oh, directly under? Ah, I see. I have been bamboozled by Lindar. How dare you? When you 
free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. Mm. Press X to doubt. Yeah, the, the writing is a little weird in this game sometimes. Oh, almost missed one. Apparently there's still some stuff up top. Also over there. Oh, up top over there. Gotcha. Nope, that's uh... That's the way to the exit. And now there's just a couple of stragglers as far as gems. Little bits here and there. And there we go. Nice easy level. Got our first thief down. And away we go. Now these guys respawn, and as you'll recall, when I killed them first, they gave out gems. If I kill them again, they give out life orbs. Uh, this is, you know, exclusive to the first game. Uh, if I circle the Spyro logo with life orbs, uh, I will get an extra life. Uh, let's go in here, I think. Into Dark Hollow. dropped. Wait, I was sure it dropped a blue butterfly. Maybe that doesn't apply to this game. It's supposed to be that a blue butterfly gives you an extra life, but I didn't see that give me an extra life. So this level teaches us about um, various monster compositions. So there are two monster modifiers that are particularly important in how you're going to handle those monsters. There is metallic and there is big. And one of the dragons is going to tell us this, but I'm going to go through it here. This guy is big. If I try to charge him, it doesn't work so well. As you can see, Sparks has turned blue because he's down to 2 HP. However, I can flame him all day. Works perfectly fine. These guys have metal shields. Can't flame those, but I can charge them. I can flame this guy here and regain my point of health. Eh, 
Alright, what do you have to say for yourself, Darius, if that is your real name? Big enemy like this north with the club cannot be charged. Yeah, sure enough. Play, that should defeat them. I could not have gotten to you if I didn't know that. And there is also a chest over there. Generally how you're going to get extra lives in the first Spyro game is either through the life orbs or through um, Spyro statues. Now this guy is big in metallic, but his back isn't metallic, and that's how you take him out. Oh geez, hi. Yeah, I think that's funny, huh? I think you stink. Oswin. I don't think you're supposed to be standing there. There you go. Use the action button when you want to zoom in and look around. Oh, your secret's safe with me. Sure, that that's a great secret. Cool. All right. So as it has already been explained to us as well, uh, every dragon pedestal. Um, does house a fairy, and those fairies will keep our progress. Uh, used to be in the original game that you would actually have to tag the pedestal in order to uh, take the checkpoint. Here, if you go close enough to one, and that's good enough. Let's open this up. Ow. That hurt a little. And this guy's probably going to teach us about metal enemies. Albin. Oh, it's you. I wasn't sure if you'd escape those annoying little creatures. Of course they wouldn't bother me, but here's a hint. Their metal armor is fireproof, but a charge attack will take care of them. Pick both of them up, Sparks, please. Hmm. I think we've mostly cleaned this place out now. There's still a little bit left. Apparently something over there. Forgot something in here? Is that what you're saying? Is that Sparks? Did he stuck in a wall? Right down here. There's the last one. And technically, I don't even need to go back to the return home portal. I do need to do that one time in order to unlock that one stage that was uh, closed off earlier. But after that, you don't really need to anymore. Well, with one exception. Uh, I don't think we did. We got one hint about metal enemies and one hint about uh, big enemies. So they they were very similar hints. So I I'm not I don't blame you for thinking they were the same hint. Damn it. 
Town Square, here we go. I, I will say this, some people who speedrun this game are super serious about speedrunning this game. Um, I will get into that as soon as we've talked about Dragon Up there. Who's gonna tell us about gliding? Probably Mills. Welcome to Town Square, Spyro. Begin exploring by gliding to that area with the bulls. Use the right stick to get a good look. But she used to be the L2 and R2 buttons. Um, but yes. Also, uh, there is one. Uh, there's one skill point that I know of. If you get all of the bulls on their horns like this, that's a skill point. Also, our charges are equally matched. But uh, yes, speedrunning this game. Now obviously some people will just speedrun the first game and leave it at that. That's perfectly fine. Some people will speedrun the entire trilogy of games, which you know, this isn't too long of a series. You can kind of do that. By the way, death water in this game, that's a pit of death. Devlin. Thanks, Spyro. <laughs> I had the worst itch on the tip of my wing. Did you know that you get your longest glides by pressing the jump button at the very top of your jump? But then some people will up the ante and do a speed run not only of uh, the Spyro trilogy, but also the Crash trilogy. All end to end without stopping. This is called the Sprash Vector, by the way. There's a name for this for this phenomenon. And if that's not enough, there is a speedrun category where you play through the Spyro trilogy and the Crash trilogy, both original and remastered. Oh, crap, I, well, I blew this now. Well, whatever. I wish I knew, Tyrion. <laughs> Spyro, do you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief, and he's stolen a dragon egg. You've got to track him down and, and get that egg. Run, run. <laughs> I'm getting a little winded. Calm down, buddy. I'll take care of it. You just... you just cold chill. Now, as you can see, there's stuff up there. How do we get up there? Well... First we get this gem. Then we get this gem. Which I currently miss. I'm just gonna flame the bulls at this point. I've flamed one by accident. But we can probably make it to that platform over there. If we're high enough if we're high enough to do it. Son of a bitch! Well, and there's the death water I was talking about. Normally you can jump out of water 
there just wouldn't be anywhere to go in that case. Also, it's kind of interesting that uh, uh, the charges from Spyro and the Bull are apparently equal. Ah! Also, why is Sparks's so I have a mod enabled that makes sparks shiny, but I swear it wasn't working until just now. Son of a bitch! Get back here, you. Okay, this is painful. There you go. You. Get on the floor. And everybody walk the dinosaur. Or dragon, I guess. By the way, it's something that, that has come up a couple of times. Mods. This game has mods. It has, it has a lot of mods. And I have a few mods that I do intend on showing off, but if uh, y'all have any uh, any ideas for mods, I have enabled the game changer. Um, 5,000 points, give me a link to a mod and I will play with it during the next stream. Uh, obviously it needs to be a mod that is streamable. Therefore, if it contains nudity or sexual content, I will not be running it. Also, I will refund the points if I was um, already planning on using it. Like, I have a couple of mods already enabled that uh, aren't going to come into play for a while. Oh, I apologize, Tyrion. And you must understand, people are hungry. Thor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. You can always check your progress by accessing the guidebook through the pause menu. I think there is some additional dialogue in this game. Like, th there are some dragons that used to only say thank you for releasing me, who now say more than just that. Like this, you play it a couple of times, it opens up. Um, Sparks, where do I go from here? Over there. I see it. Hmm. How do I get up there? How do I get up there? The eternal question that I ask in like every other game that I play. That's everything. There we go. Also, I want to see if... Uh... I think all the bulls are on the floor now, but uh... yeah, whatever. I probably messed up my chance to prob properly get the um, the skill point, and that's okay. 
I only saw it go up to 548, so I don't really know what happened there. But, uh, saying it got 100%, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, actually, hang on. So, uh, three, and I think there are five areas plus the actual, uh, home world for almost every world. So now let's go back to the area that was closed off before. And that's not it, that's the balloonist. We'll talk to the balloonist later. I need to also remember that there is a mini-map at the bottom left of the screen, which I can reference whenever I need to figure out where I am. So, this game has boss stages. We're gonna go confront Toasty. These guys are jerks, by the way. You flame them once, and they just kind of jump at you. And the proper way to deal with it is um, by dodge rolling. And sometimes that doesn't even work. Ow. As you can see, I tried to jump away from me. Come on, dude. Anyway, Sparks is gone now, and uh, Sparks has been largely responsible for facilitating collection of gems, also keeping us alive. I call bull shenanigans on that. That nearly hit me. Come on, dude. I'm going to attempt to, to let sleeping dogs lie here as much as possible. Fortunately, our gems stay collected. the correct buttons there, Coolio. Ah. Okay. Yeah, these dogs are kind of jokes. Please not, sir. Apparently double flaming is potentially good enough. Anyway, let us go release this dragon. Nevin. most devious henchman in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on! I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. Toasty has many tricks up his sleeve. Devious, right. 
That bit is just a friggin... Ow! Well, that was devious. Look at this jerk. I bet underneath that he's just a sheep on stilts. Well, I'll be damned. That's exactly what he is. up the return home portal. We get these last couple of gems and we're out of here. Now let's get Sparks back. There we go. So we have cleared out all of the normal stuff in Yars and Homeworld, but there's still the matter of this, Sunny Flight. This tends to be the bane of a lot of Spyro players. Let's demonstrate why. Once it loads, of course. So what do we gotta do? Well, there are four targets and eight of each target that we need to hit. Hitting a target will give us additional time. You can see the time that we have available over on the top right. Hitting all eight of a target. <sighs> I pressed the dash button by accident. By the way, if you land in the water, you gotta start over. You get all eight of them, you get gems. You get all four of... I keep pressing the wrong button. What is wrong with me? You get all four of the sets of eight. You get more gems. Someday I'll get this right. You know what? Why don't I press this button for flame? That way I can't possibly get it wrong, right? Okay. Now, where do we go? We can go in here. And get this last one on the way out. There we go. Now arches! Now break from the arches, take care of these planes. Missed the double there. Dang! Get over here, you. Where's the last one? There we go.
And the last arch. There we go. So once I stopped pressing the right buttons, this one wasn't so bad. They do get worse. Anyway, that is everything in the Arisen homeworld. Also, I, I like how, like, the, the homeworld loads so fast that it doesn't even have time to count all of the gems. Yes, yeah, some of these get real tight, but you have to figure out exactly what you need to do. Anyway, this is the Balloonist. In the original game, they were not voiced. In this game, they are. Wow! I see you've been busy rescuing dragons, Spyro. You may travel to the Peacekeeper's world if you like. Are you ready to go? Sure. And on we go to the Peacekeeper's homeworld. Spin! I don't know why it was spinning so much. <clears throat> All right. So here's the next home world where we meet first Titan. Welcome to Peacekeepers. Look how our treasure has been stolen and turned against us. Please, recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure. Got it. I could have sworn that in the original that was Magnus, but I could be mistaken. And naturally, how do dragons keep the peace? By declaring war, I guess. I believe there is a uh, skill point for burning down all the tents. Hmm. So they, they went and hid in the tents. Let's see what happens if I burn one down. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting this. Oh, there's Magnus. They just moved him. Hey, Spyro. Sparks the Dragonfly has been doing a good job protecting you. Make sure to keep him strong by feeding him lots of butterflies. So now they've been pointing these cannons at us, but there's a big old target there. What would happen if, say, we move this cannon to point to this target? Light the fuse. Boom. What about these chests? Can I do the same thing? Yes, indeed. Not that one, though. This one's a little too close. But you see, there is no, uh, there is no padlock on that one that we can just open with a key, so we do have to blast it open. These designs. Yes, indeed. So as you can see, this is our boss level. 
Nothing is stopping us from going there immediately. So that's our balloonist. And I think we actually have enough treasure that we could just skip this entire home world. Oh geez. Wasn't expecting that to happen. So I'm not really sure how else I'm supposed to open that chest if it's not through this pin. There we go. For some reason it just didn't fire correctly the first time. And tag our friendly neighborhood fairy. Scorch the friendly neighborhood bunnies for their juicy juicy health. I don't think I need that cannon. No, I don't need that cannon either. I see those boxes there that I missed before. Uh, can I jump on that? Yes, I can. Bye. So here's our flight stage. As previously, I'm going to keep that one for last in general. Son of a bitch! Gunnar. Well done, Spyro. Keep up the good work, and I know you'll fulfill your destiny. Destiny? I just want to kick some. Just toast those enemies and collect the treasure. Spyro being edgy. I think from up here we can go over here. Or not! Ow! Ow! Dead. Destiny, I crave violence. I'm pretty sure that's what I was supposed to do, just it didn't work out that time. There we go. That was needlessly tight. And yet we still have some gems left. They're over this way. And it's probably just one set of... It's probably just one uh, green gem for two. In this box. There we go. Let's make sure. 100%. Anyway, dry canyons right here. Let's do that. This game is really good at making you feel that your last jump should have reached the other side. That is a true words. So something that 
that is particularly nice about this guy. Son of a bitch! Something that is particularly nice about this game that only applies to this one, not the other two. There is nothing that really prevents you from 100%ing every stage, other than your own sense of how to play the game. Uh, okay. I saw a world wonder. Come on. Conan. What? Huh? Oh. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Oh, I guess that's one of the thank you for releasing me and nothing else. Um, I mean, something like the, the way that, let's say, Banjo-Kazooie does it is you may need some additional abilities in order to, um, to get everything, but those additional abilities are generally going to be in the stage of, that you're in. Or they're going to be something in a different stage that you will already practically have been required to get in order to finish. Ow! Zero! Thank you for the resub. Eight months, man. We're getting up there. Getting close to that year. Let's see. Okay, that was my own failure. Like, I will attack you with my flight birds. If that doesn't work, I'm going to attack you with my club bird. Anyway, what I was getting at is that the... Uh, the later two games in the series have um, kind of harsh gating requirements. Ivor. Is that you, Spyro? Are you the young dragon I've been hearing so much about? Ever since you were a wee puff of smoke, we've known. Uh, You've known. Ah, uh, I forget. <laughs> Okay. Going for the senility joke. Alright, cool. I mean, these were written in like the 90s, so they're not all gonna be good. Okay, let's see. Oh, set it on flame and watch go. Oh, you appear to be stuck in a glitch. Let me help you with that. Can I make it? Can I make it? Yes! Just barely. Oh no. I have to do this again because I don't have the key. Well, let's get as much as we can. All right. 
Alright. I have him in here. I need to sneak up on that bird. Quick draw is not fast enough, buddy. It is nice that um, let's call it the rear right shoulder button, whether you want to call that um, R2, ZR, or right um, trigger, I think. Um, also works as a flame button in this game, which makes switching from running to flame a lot smoother. Dang. Hmm. Eternal question. How do I get up there? Ah! Not like that. Unfortunately, Spyro is still trying to figure out flight. I'm pretty sure that the flight stages are like somehow at a lower gravity which makes it easier for a Spyro to actually fly. Boris! Dry Canyon rewards good gliders. You are a good glider, eh, Spyro? I was born to glide. <laughs> Boris doubts us pretty severely. Um... Well, that's one way to get up here, but this is not the up here that I wanted to get to. But if nothing else, maybe we can find some craters around here. I'm not seeing craters anywhere. So that's not great. Really? Let's try that again. This time we're going to flame this thing. There we go. I just tried to um, to click the uh, the left analog stick to have sparks. It's clearly not here. Tell me where to find gems. Where do I find critters? I need critters. I need them to live. They are supposed to respawn. There we go. There's some here. dragon up here. But basically what we gotta do is glide up to this ledge up here. We 
since I'm pretty sure that's what I'm supposed to do. Get our health back up to full. It has been a while since I've played this game, so please bear with me. As I've proven by showing off the file select screen, I have cleared this 100% in the past, and I have cleared the original games 100% several times. So what I'm getting at here is I'm blaming this on the Let's Play curse. Can I make that glide? Nope. Sure can't. Okay. Oh. But I might be able to make it from up there. But how do I get up there? The eternal question. It haunts me to this day. How do I get up there? That is a cave. I think I see it. I think that's the intended solution, but that didn't work out. Oh, but this, uh, actually, this would allow us a little bit more height. And I think we can make it from here. Yeah, there we go. I think then we have to hug this. There we go. That's how we get up here. Maximus. Incredible glide, Spyro. I thought I'd be stuck here forever with those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Flame broiled with a pinch of salt. I really prefer the delivery from the original game for that line. It's a flame broiled, pinch of salt. There, there are a few uh, line reads that I really prefer from the original game. I know, right? It's such a funny joke. Let's all laugh at the person and be ableist. Again, these were written in the 90s. Jokes that were quote unquote okay at the time. Fortunately, any such jokes in this game tend to be pretty mild for the most part. Uh, there we go. 
100, and that is the stage. So let's get out of here. Boop. Boop. Oh, gonna miss you apparently. Boop. Um, this is where we. No, this is not where we just were. This is Clifton. For a second there, I thought that is where we just were, and I was incorrect. As usual, for some reason, loading up the um, the actual stages takes longer. Come back down, you. And show it off here. Ah, yes, Cliff Town. This this stage can be pretty tricky. Not gonna lie. Especially considering that there are some gems behind there. And we're not able to get those from here. Another, another tricky thing is that you need to remember to flay in these kettles. Each one of them contains a gem. something back here. There is a butterfly there. Sparks, please get it. It's good for our collective health. This one's particularly tricky for the fact that if you if you turn too sharply, you end up hitting a wall. Or just completely getting derailed. There we go. When in doubt, burn everything. Well, either burn it or charge it. One of the two, sometimes both. Done. Power war. supposed to flame metal armor anyway remember spyro flame won't work on metal but charge it with your horns that should do the trick that's letting us know in case we didn't play that stage in the first uh in the first home world everything over on this side.
I think one of the most impressive things about the original game is how Insomniac handled uh, draw distance limitations. Because, like, yeah, we can see all of the gems over there, and they're sparkling like that. But um, a lot of PlayStation games, if you're looking that far out, all you're going to see is fog. And somehow, um, Insomniac were able to make it work. And we're able to not do that. Also, strong box there. Again, no keyhole. And you gotta find another way to open it. No kryptonite fog or rings. Yes, exactly. Enzo! Wow, oh, Enzo, you've put on weight. Why don't you glide there and find out? Maybe that wasn't Enzo Matrix. I don't know. Well, let's glide over there and find out. Also, you see these uh, these pedestals here. That's basically the invisible wall. You can't go beyond that point. You okay there, buddy? I feel like you were stuck in an animation you shouldn't have been in. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe I was, maybe I was seeing that wrong. I don't know. And I think that's all of the gems up here. So let's go ahead and talk to Marco. Polo. Get to almost anywhere from here. If I were you, I'd use that whirlwind over there. Uh, and it's not entirely clear what he's talking about, but uh, this whirlwind wasn't here before. So by unlocking Marco, we open that up. We're able to come back here without having to go around the wall. Now I did mention something about there being uh, gems right at the beginning that we could get to. But if we go around this way, without hitting the invisible walls, I honestly don't know how you're supposed to figure this one out. And that plops us right back here. Hmm. Are we gonna be able to glide over there? Not sure. Possibly. That was really close. There we go. That gave us a little bit of extra leeway to get over here. Hmm. I should 
should be able to hit that. Maybe I can't. I know in the original you could. But if you remember that one uh, strong box, that's how you open it up. Definitely not. It's right there. Come on. Here. You can do it, Spyro. I believe in you. There we go. I knew that was supposed to be possible. I don't know how it's possible otherwise. There we go. 400 out of 400. And that's all the dragons and everything else. Ow. How dare. Uh, so I think... Good next place to go the Ice Cavern. I think is near the... Yeah, there we go. Things about to get slippery. <laughs> Press set or R twice to do barrel roll. Admiring the depths of the abyss I was getting fired at. Ulrich, what you gotta say? A word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big, <clears throat> like me, before uh -huh. charging those large enemies. I feel like this dragon species is kind of full of themselves. Not gonna lie. Ow! Twas just a flesh wound and nothing more. A lot of big dudes around here. Now you'll notice locked box. 
You'll also notice, if I can find it, over there, keys over there. Not gonna lie, this is kind of a jerk move game. Extinguish my flame, sir. Shall spawn in kind. I have to ask, what was in that snowball? So these guys are big and metallic, and they're also big on both sides, uh, metallic on both sides. So what, how do you deal with them? Well, you can still kind of charge them, just how they react to it has got to be a little different. Flat as and haunts. I don't know why I decided to go with that analogy. <laughs> the game doesn't really care how you eliminate an enemy. Uh, if it goes off the edge of the screen, or the edge of the map, it uh, will generally just directly give you that gem. Now this stage is kind of sprawling. I don't know if you could tell. Oh, I forgot about this. You gotta charge these poles and get the gems on top, hidden in plain sight. But also the slight hazard of if you miss slightly, you may end up careening into the abyss instead. Ragnar! Some dragons thought you weren't ready, but I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, all right. Uh, ready for what? If you have to ask, you're not ready. everything over here. There's our turn home portal. But we're not quite done yet. I think that's at least the last dragon. Asher. I think that was another thank you for releasing me one of them. Over that way. Alright. I'm 
Sure enough. Oh, there's still a dragon here too. All right. I guess we're not done with dragons quite yet. Good luck becoming a Pokemon master. A uh, dragon master is uh, that that's Lunar. Andor. Isn't there a new game called Andor? Thank you for releasing me. Anyway, see you later, Zero. Thanks for dropping by. Bolted. Wait. There we go. Refill health, please. Thanks. There's still a dragon? Jeez, how many dragons are in this stage? Once again, being careful here. Or you don't end up careening. Tudor. Spyro, some big norks up ahead are wearing armor. And in the ice cave, armor can make their feet very slippery. Hmm. And there is where we're supposed to have learned about how to take care of the house. Anyway, I think we might just have the lock chest left to open up if I can platform correctly. And sure enough, 400 out of 400. 100% level complete. Let's get out of here. So that is the three regular stages done. which will lead us to confronting Dr. Shemp, which is over here. Uh, I want to do that now. Yeah, you know what? I'll do that now. I see that the eclipse that we're experiencing in Xenoblade 3 is in full effect here. Also, there are some enemy choices that were, um, let's say, redesigned for this game to not be blatantly offensive. sure how I ended up not dying there. What? I disagree, game. Oh, 
Well, I don't know where they ran off to, but hopefully, um, hopefully I got those gems. Carefully get those. And up the whirlwind. If we can carefully do this. Ooh, just barely. We get our first 25 value gem. And certainly not the last. Actually, no, we we got one in uh we got one in Clifftown. What am I talking about? I think we got one in Clifftown. Anyway, Trondo, tell us about this boss. Listening to him over and over, but I tell you one thing, he should watch his back. Cause you're gonna stab him. And you have the knife. You're no longer encased in crystal. Dang. Yeah, they, they redesigned the dragons, not because some of them were um, a bit tasteless, but because some of them were very samey. And so they that that's they, they had some good design moves going on with this. Well that was a bit of a blind shot, but that worked out. I think you're gonna do the spin spin. Uh, is there anything around here? I don't think there is. Forget what you do for phase three. There we go. Skill point acquired. Beat Dr. Shemp without taking damage. Or specifically beat Dr. Shemp without taking damage to Dr. Shemp. Three hundred out of three hundred. And that's a hundred percent complete. So that leaves us with one thing left to do. There it is. I think let's get right into it. If I cannot get stuck stuck on the geometry. Now remember, press R2 or ZR to flame. And not try to press any of the face buttons because that tends to not work out well for me for some reason. Nice easy rings. a soft crash recoverable. There we go. Then we go 
go for arches. This camera is not doing me any favors at some points. And then lanterns. Uh, where is the next one? Well, poo. Well, There's definitely some more optimal ways to do this, but uh... Super close. <sighs> These are rude. I was trying to see if uh, maybe running here would actually make it faster, but that's in Spyro 2 that they put that in. We're gonna get this. When I was doing my original uh, race series with, uh, with that one other Let's Player that disappeared, um, I, re I, I do remember that the uh, the flight stages were definitely a uh, point that uh, got on my nerves. Yeah, 
and it was a lot easier for me to get a lot angrier because it was not a great time in my life. Let's just leave it at that. There we go. Seven. Eight. I got tripped up by the friggin' spinny animation, I think. There's also the fact that, like, it's very subtle, but the longer that you're in flight, the faster you go. And you also gain additional speed by flying low as much as possible. But not that low. Nope, that ain't gonna do it. That ain't gonna do it. You know what? I think I'm going to take this opportunity to take a break and uh look up an ideal like uh an optimal solution for how to do this plus we're at the halfway mark anyway so we're we are gonna take a break anyway it works out right that's how it works that's how i say it works anyway uh y'all can uh take a break get something to drink go to the bathroom if you need to stretch your arms stretch your legs stretch your teeth and in about 10 to 15 minutes, this stage. Again, we're going to get it done, I promise. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 